brief summer break, we are now in colder autumn days where we're getting back to our normal routine. Most of us live in heated insulated homes and work in conducive offices where the changes in the weather don't really affect our lifestyle. But we sometimes wonder what is it like for people who live in canal boats, often referred to as barges people. This program will be dedicated in looking at how the effect of weather conditions and other factors affect barges people. Today I'm in Gas Street Basin near Birmingham City Centre. We're here today to discover more about barges and their lifestyles. So let's find out more. For James and Phyllis, it's just £1,500 a year to live on this narrow boat, and they are quite happy leading their retired life travelling through the peaceful canals of the Midlands. Phyllis has her roots in a Bargy family. Her mother lived on a working boat. Um, what made you decide to come and live in the boat? Oh, well, I wanted to go back to my roots. Uh, and what are your roots? I was born on the working boats. Okay. And for people who have lived in boats, when you say working boats, what does that mean? Um, it's not, this is like a pleasure boat, but the working boats used to carry coal. They was barges, it was coal uh, barges. Yeah. Was and they carried coal, cement, steel. Okay. Before the, the railway took, uh, took over and, and the lorries on the, uh, the road like that. Okay, come on in. Alright, thank you very much. Would you like to come in? Yes. That would be nice. And how does what's canal boats like for very tall people like myself, who's like six foot tall? Well, well, oh, right you'll you soon find out when you come in. It's um, much bigger on, it, on the inside than it looks from the outside. It's because we're in water. Yes. Water's here. Okay. We're in that much water. Yeah. Of the boat. Yes. Because we're right down. Okay, so tell us about what's life like here in this canal in, in this canal boat. It's okay. It's all right. It's uh, it's warm, co uh, comfortable enough. Okay, and how does it con contrast with people living in houses, home, uh, bungalows, apartments? Well, the mere, mere fact that we can move whenever we we like. You know, there's there's a saying that that goes on. If you don't like your neighbours, we can move. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so this here heats up the water yeah, and, and keeps uh, the, the radiators. Radiator. Uh, the back boiler, yeah. Okay, and is the back boiler in the back of that? Yes, it is. It's inside the fire. Okay, and then you have radiators around the place right, and they, right. they're heated, the water's pumped and circulated. Yeah. So that keeps you warm. About, what about cooking? How do you cook your food? Do you have a cooker here? We have yes, a cooker. Full size cooker. Just uh, just a uh, just a normal cooker. Is that gas, electricity? It's, it's gas. It's gas. Uh, color gas. gas. It runs on color gas. Okay, I've been told that you, you used to live in boats years ago, and I you, did. you yeah, did, and you've did. returned to live in it. What made you d make that decision? Why did you come to live in the boat again? Well, how it came about was I dirt my back, and I had to stay in bed for three weeks while my back was healing. I got bored, I booked a holiday on a narrow boat with a company and we had a week's holiday and then I cried <laughs> because I didn't want to give it back. <laughs> <laughs> and but you wanted to go back to your roots. And you? I wanted to go back to my roots, you know, oh. I was thinking about my mum and dad and everything. Is there like a history of art and paintings? I'm just looking at this yes. here. Yeah. Um, this, what Roses is this? and castles they call it. This is a milk churn. Okay. This is what they, the boats used to br uh, deliver, you know, to Cadbury's, uh, to Bourneville, and okay. uh, yeah, and various different places. But I've got this off my sister, 
and we had it painted and, up. But we had it painted up in, in the traditional rose. They call it roses and castles. Okay. You know, in the traditional way. Uh, um, why do people paint things? Because I think this is a plain melt, melt. Yeah. Yes, it well, is. Yeah. Yes. Um, container. Why do people choose to paint them? Well, they, the, the it was to it's it was to liven up their life, you know, because the back cabin, what they used to live in, was only very small. And and she live in that, and it was very plain. Well, it it's just all be, wood. It used to be so, ten foot. Yeah, so so they like paint flowers. It was like a decoration. Yeah. To brighten up their lives. Well, it was lace. Yeah, and, and lace curtains and stuff like that. Roses and castles. It's, it's by a good author who, who actually took these pictures because he was interested in canal people and canal boats. And this picture here is uh, Phyllis Beryl, uh, my, my wife's mother, holding the two twins. Which the two, two children, which is just out, she's just come out of hospital. The British canal system of water transport played a vital role in the United Kingdom's Industrial Revolution time when roads were only just emerging. The uh, UK was the first country to acquire a nationwide canal network. Families lived in extremely cramped conditions at the back of the boat and had no other home. From this period, the famous tradition of brightly decorated boats developed. And the excellent artistic skills of the barge people were exhibited on the canal boats both inside and outside. Many of the barges were travellers who separated from the Roman Gypsy travellers. Originally, these travellers were called Romanichals, who migrated from the northern part of India. When we examine the arts and culture of travelling people, we discover that it dates back to 1000 AD. Many of these travellers have been traditionally referred to as Gypsy Roman travellers. They originally descended from India in the 15th century and migrated to Britain. Today, many of these travellers simply refer to themselves as English, Scottish, Welsh or simply as travellers. According to Emma Brady, life on the boat makes you well organised. This luxurious boat was a present from her dad, and she's been living on it for four years. Her living costs of £200 per month would never be enough to provide you with a house of equal luxury. My boat is called Sersha, which is Irish for freedom. Um, it was made by, um, I think, Grosner canals and narrow boats in about 2007 from an empty shell. Uh, my dad decided to um, to buy it uh, and had it all decorated. Um, the boat is pretty well cared out as boats go. It has um, two flat screen televisions, a DVD player, digital box, um, the aerials, just a standard aerial on the roof. Um, for gas cooker, oven, central heating, air conditioning, electric shower, microwave. The only real problem that you could have is, you know, you have a hot shower because you are underneath, technically half of your boat's underneath the water. So um, because of the gravity, the water needs to be pumped out. Um, there are two different types of main boats. One has a, for the uh, toilet facilities, has a pump out system, which is basically uh, like a septic tank that sits underneath the bed in the bedrooms. I don't have one of those. Um, and then, you know, when they're full, either a channeler will come and pump it out for you, or there are sanitation stations along the canal where you can have them pumped out, or there is the other type, which is having cassettes, which is similar to sort of chemical toilets that you would get in um, a caravan or motorhome or something. So you just empty those cassettes and take those to the same sanitation station. Sanitation stations usually have a shower, a sleuth, and um, toilet facilities there as well. So some people choose not to use so much of their own water um, in the showers and tend to use the sanitation stations. 
Um, the other difficulty, I suppose, is laundry. Um, so even though you can cook and do everything that you normally would do, um, with laundry, most people would go and use a laundrette or get someone to do it for them or um, literally wash and scrub with hand wash uh, and then some people have sort of like tabletop uh, surface spinners so that they can dry more easily and then um, they usually just let them uh, light the fire burners um, to try and get them to dry. Um, there is a British Waterways licence, which thankfully I don't pay for and my dad pays for, which gives you a British Waterways key, um, which is access for the sanitation stations uh, and um, upkeep of the canals as far as as far as I know. It's a one bedroom house in Birmingham City Centre, you're probably looking more to £700 a month. And including diesel, I probably pay closer to about £200 a month. So it is a lot more economical and you don't use as much electricity as a lot of it's more exciting. It's easier to go to sleep at night because it rocks. There have been man-made canals in Britain for many centuries. The canal building became very important around 230 years ago, with the main line canals forming a big cross on the map of England, with Birmingham in the middle. North to south, they linked the River Mersey at Runcorn to the River Thames in London, and west to east, linking the River Trent to the River Severn. On most narrowboats, steering is done with a tiller, as it was on all working narrow boats, and the steerer stands at the stern of the boat, aft of where one emerges from the hatchway and rear doors at the top of the steps up from the cabin. The steering area comes in various forms. Each one meets different needs, such as maximising internal space, having a more traditional appearance, providing a rear deck large enough for everyone to enjoy summer weather, or perhaps offering protection for the steerer in bad weather. Each type has its advocates. Nevertheless, the boundaries are not fixed and some boats blur the categories as designers try out slightly different arrangements and combinations. A lock is a device for raising and lowering boats between stretches of water on different levels on rivers and canal waterways. The distinguishing feature of a lock is a fixed chamber in which the water level can be varied, whereas in a caisson lock, a boat lift or on a canal inclined plane, it is the chamber itself that rises and falls. Locks are used to make a river more easily navigable, or to allow a canal to take a reasonably direct line across land that is not level. The flight of locks at Hatton, Warwickshire, sometimes called the stairway to heaven, is an extreme example of what canal engineers managed to achieve in the 18th century. It has 21 consecutive locks, allowing a barge to rise or drop 146 feet in less than a few hundred metres. Roy Lewis 
had lived on his boat with his family for more than six years. He finds that a bargee's life is a lot more economical than living in a house. Almost all the facilities of a house are available on his boat, which he enjoys taking all over the Midlands. The canal system was, um, was built really during the, um, the 18th century, um, mainly to transport goods, uh, predominantly coal, um, limestone, uh, goods which were obviously very difficult to, to transport by land. The boats were drawn by horse, no engines in them days. Um, and whole families would live on, on a boat. They'd live in a cabin at the back of the boat. Um, you know, families of up to four or five people in a cabin about six to eight foot long. So it wasn't that much space. The main space on the boat was obviously used for the goods that they were carrying. The canal system always competed with other modern technology. When the railways were built, they tended to follow the canal lines, you know, they, they, they went the same sort of ways. Um, and a lot of freight moved over to, onto trains off the boats because it was obviously quicker. Um, and then when the motorways came in in the 60s, then the same again, you know. So by, by the 1950s, 60s, the canal system was, was falling apart, really. Um, and then around the sort of 70s, a lot of people started to look into um, actually um, maintaining the system and um, using it for leisure rather than for industry. Now that we live in the 21st century, obviously um, technology has moved on and we use the same technology as people would use in houses. The, our power system to transfer from 12 volt, we're charging on 12 volt batteries, so charging the batteries with 12 volt, but obviously for a lot of things like TVs, that's not really very good. So we have what's called an inverter and that transfers the 12 volt electricity into 240 volt like you get in a house. So we have 32 inch TV, uh, we have computers, laptops, uh, mobile phones, uh, router for the internet, um, everything that you would have in a house really, exactly the same. Um, it's about moving, it's a, bit, it's a traveling lifestyle, it's not about staying in one place. You know, I know lots of people who do do that, they live on boats and they live in a marina or they live on a mooring but they never really move and I can't see the point myself. As you can see it's not very wide, six foot, six foot eight wide. Um, so that can get quite cramped in the winter. Um, but yeah, most of the time we tend to keep moving. You know, we've just got back into Birmingham um, on Saturday. Uh, on Wednesday, we're moving out the city. And then um, by the weekend, we'll be out in the countryside again, ready for autumn. Risk factors, really. Um, fire is probably one of the biggest risks. Um, obviously, because they're using, um, using uh, wood burners and things, there's always a risk of fire. And we use candles as well. So obviously a fire in a boat is very different to a fire in a house because you're in a metal box. So it can be far more dangerous. The heat can be obviously more dangerous, but, and also smoke as well. So we have, we have fire alarms, um, smoke detectors, uh, carbon monoxide is another problem for pits. People have died from carbon monoxide poisoning through, um, through cookers. So basically the, the boat has a safety check, a bit like a car has MOT. They do that every, um, every four years. The boat's insulated with what we call rock wool, which is basically, um, Insulation that's used in houses and buildings, um, and it's actually made from um, from from rock, yeah, um, made into what well, it looks a bit like candy floss, really, but it's made made from rock. Very good insulator, um, and also will stop condensation, which can be a big problem in boats because of them because of them being metal. Uh, you, in the winter, you get a lot of condensation, so the rock wall is sandwiched between the boards on the wall. Um, so that obviously causes uh, the best insulation. Obviously in the winter the other big obstacle is ice. Once the canal ice is up, um, once it gets to uh, uh, more than say an inch thick then we can't move anymore um, because you, the boat just won't go through it so we have to stay where we are then. Um, yeah I've had some problems over the years. Um, I had a run in with some uh, some lads in Wolverhampton last year and got got beaten up on the outside me my front door, so that weren't good. Um, you have to be careful, you know. Some of the places the canal network goes through can be quite rough, and also we do get some hassle off British waterways. They tend to they police the network so that we have to keep moving. If we don't keep moving, then they could eventually actually stop us having a license to have the boat in the first place. 
so they sometimes they can be quite full on with that but most of the time they're all right as long as we keep moving they're, they're fine with us British Waterways are going through a change. They're, uh, they're going to become a, a charity status like the National Trust. What the future holds, I'm not sure with it becoming a trust because uh, obviously with regard to money, um, you know, the, the, the canal system needs more money ploughed into it and there isn't, there isn't enough really. You know, my logic really is that the government should put money into it because at the end of the day the canal system is around drainage and we're having floods every year and people are getting their houses flooded and canals are part of draining that water away so I think they should be maintained by governments and local councils not just by British Waterways. One of the fascinations of the British inland waterways is the wide variety of boats and barges that populate them. Today the great majority are holiday cruisers custom built for the purpose. But until the 1950s, the sight of a pleasure boat, as a working boatman would rather quaintly call it, was still unusual. Today, pleasure cruisers and working boats travel a canal side by side, bringing new life and purpose to British waterways. But the industry that caused these magnificent canals to be built is long gone. The British Canal Waterways is so supportive of people living on boats. Many of the boats today are especially equipped for the tourism and leisure industries. So why not consider staying on one of these boats and you never know, you could become a boat owner without paying the council tax.